For the first minute, we need to address something that puzzles archaeologists, woodworkers, and survival experts alike. The Vikings built ships that crossed brutal seas, endured freezing temperatures, and survived decades of saltwater abuse. They crafted longhouses whose beams withstood moisture-heavy climates where rot should have consumed them. And all of this happened without synthetic sealants, plastics, or modern preservatives. The fact is, Viking woodcraft wasn't just functional. It was brilliant, deliberate engineering that leaned on natural materials and techniques we rarely use today. Even more impressive is that these methods remain fully effective, practical, and repeatable for anyone working with wood in harsh conditions. In this video, we uncover the waterproofing method the Norse used, how they developed it, and how you can apply it to your own projects, whether you're building tools, structures, or outdoor gear. This is not myth or speculation. It is grounded in archaeological evidence and historical woodworking practice, and it still works better than many modern finishes when done right. Vikings waterproofed wood using a tar derived from slow burn pine that penetrated deeply into the grain. The core of the Viking waterproofing technique was pine tar, also called Stockholm tar, created by burning pine roots, stumps, or resin rich wood in a low oxygen kiln. This wasn't surface tar. Like what is used on roads, it was a thin, resin-heavy liquid that seeped into timber, protected against moisture, and resisted fungal attack. Viking shipbuilders coated planks, frames, and hull seams with this tar. It locked out salt water and prevented swelling and shrinking cycles from splitting boards apart. When combined with wool caulking and iron rivets, it formed a flexible waterproof envelope that allowed longships to travel thousands of miles. This material soaked deeply and didn't flake or peel like many modern coatings. It behaved more like a preservative within the wood than a paint on top of it. If you work with outdoor structures, tool handles, fence posts, or anything exposed to rain, you can still use pine tar the way Viking builders did. Heating it before application allows it to penetrate even further, strengthening the wood from within. The method relied on a slow, controlled burn that produced a clean, resin-rich tar rather than dirty soot or pitch. To produce high-quality tar, the Vikings used earth-covered kilns that restricted oxygen so the pine wood smouldered rather than ignited. This slow pyrolysis forced resin to liquefy and drip downward into collecting channels. What they captured wasn't thick like modern roofing tar, but closer to a dark, thin oil. You can replicate this in a much simpler form today with a metal container layered with resinous wood and vented only slightly. As the container heats, tar runs out through a small hole into a secondary pot. A modern alternative is to use pre-made pine tar, which is sold for traditional boat building and is nearly identical to the Viking product. Heat it gently until it reaches a runny consistency. When applied hot to wood, it bonds instantly and begins soaking in. If you're waterproofing something like an axe handle or outdoor stool, reapply after a few hours. For structural beams or posts, two or three applications over warm wood create outstanding protection. The Vikings enhanced the waterproofing process by mixing tar with animal fat or linseed oil to create a flexible, weather-resistant coating. Pure pine tar is effective, but, you know, it can become brittle in extreme cold. Viking craftsmen solved this by blending it with animal fat, seal fat or fish oil, depending on what was available. This didn't dilute the tar's effectiveness, it actually made it more versatile. 
The fat allowed the mixture to stay flexible, preventing cracking during those freeze-thaw cycles. You can reproduce this by mixing pine tar with boiled linseed oil in equal parts, heating them gently until fully blended. This mixture spreads easily, cures within a short period, and leaves wood with a rich, durable finish that resists water without sealing the fibres too tightly. For outdoor furniture, shed beams or tool handles, this blend remains honestly one of the most reliable natural waterproofers on earth. The method worked because it allowed wood to breathe while preventing water penetration. Modern waterproof coatings often trap moisture inside, leading to rot from within. Viking waterproofing did the opposite. Their tar penetrated wood so deeply that it created a water-resistant barrier beneath the surface, while still allowing the outer layer to breathe. This prevented trapped condensation and allowed planks to expand and contract naturally. If you are building a raised bed frame, an outdoor bench, or a storage chest, this method prevents long-term degradation without creating moisture pockets. When you apply a warm tar oil blend, just wipe away excess after about 15 minutes and let the piece rest in sunlight or warm air. The surface will slowly harden while the inner layers remain conditioned. To waterproof wood Viking style, start by obtaining pine tar or producing your own if you have access to resin-rich wood. Heat the tar until it thins. Blend it with oil or fat if you want flexibility and easier application. Brush it onto warm wood, allow it to soak in, and apply multiple coats as needed. The final finish is resilient, dark, and historically accurate. A shed door treated this way resists rain for years. A tool handle conditioned with it gains strength, grip, and protection. Even small projects like spoons, bowls, or camping gear become more weather-worthy. The Vikings didn't rely on guesswork. Their natural waterproofing method kept ships afloat, protected homes from brutal northern climates, and preserved tools for generations. The pine tar technique remains just as effective today because it works with the wood rather than against it. If you value methods grounded in real history, practical skill and long-tested craftsmanship, this is one worth mastering. For more in-depth historical techniques and practical survival craftsmanship, subscribe to Thermal Vault and, well, share this video to help this knowledge reach more people who appreciate the engineering of the past.